Hello all, I am Harry Keynes for the Block Festival. The Block Festival is a celebration of independent vision and artistic expression. This year's festival will be held on Friday, September 28th and Saturday, September 29th in downtown Logan Historic Theater District. At this time, I would like to introduce you to one of Cache Valley's best musicians, Wade Evans. Wade, hello. Hello, Harry. It's good to see you. Wade will be performing uh, with his band and also will be a part of the Blocks Learn program. Well, he will be talking about the many great instruments that he has acquired throughout the world during his journeys. Wade, the first question is, what were your influences growing up that led you to have so many of these magnificent instruments from all around the world? Well, I've been playing music since a, from a very young age, from maybe six or seven years old. I started playing piano at six or seven. I moved to the guitar when I was eight or nine. And all through my teenage years, that's all I did was play music. And I think it was at some point in my teenage years, I uh, discovered experimental music and improvisational music. Um, and this, this is, this was the beginning of the journey that led me to the East, where improvisational music is is common. Um, and so in my early 20s, I, I started listening to more and more Eastern music, Hindustani or uh, North Indian classical music in particular. And of course, the, uh, the legendary Pandit Ravi Shankar um, was my initial introduction, you know, as, as he was for most people in the West who discover Indian music. Um, and he may, you may recognize this name from his uh, association with the Beatles and George, George Harrison in particular as his sitar teacher and mentor. Um, and so in my early 20s, at some point I decided I, I wanted to learn, you know, after listening to this, this music and, and constantly just being amazed by the depth and beauty and uh, the freedom in the music. So, I made my first journey to India in my early 20s at 23, where I met my teacher for the first time. And, um, and I, I ended up at his home sort of by chance. And um, he and his son, are, who's, who is a couple years my elder, um, are, and is also a master sitarist, uh, they, they welcomed me into their home. <clears throat> they noticed me outside listening to them. And they brought me inside, and uh, uh, my teacher's wife brought samosas and chai, and we sat and we're talking. And they said, they asked me, so where where are you from? You know, and I said, oh, I live in Bellingham, Washington. And they, and they said, wow, we were we were in Bellingham only four days ago. They said we were we were to doing a tour, a concert tour of the West Coast in the U.S. And uh, on one of our last days after playing at Folk Life Festival in Seattle, we were invited to play at a birthday party in Bellingham, Washington. They said, oh, well, whose birthday was this? And he, he showed me a card and he pulled out my friend's card. And I said, wow, this is so strange. He's like, this is a, these are my friends. He said, oh yeah, he showed me on his camera, on his digital camera, he had pictures of him with my friends back home. And, well, this is a billion people in India, and I end up at the home of the ones who had just days before been playing at my friend's birthday party back, back home. Almost and, kismet, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and um, they said, "Well, what are you doing here?" And I said, "Well, I'm looking for a sitar teacher." And the father, who who doesn't speak much English, you know, is speaking through his son. So, well, you know, tell him to come back tomorrow morning. And, and that's how it started. And that's how it started. When, when you went to India when you were 23, what experience had you already had? I'm, I'm assuming guitar, banjo, and yeah, most uh, other mostly, string mostly strings. But like I said, my, my my initiation in music was through the piano as a kid. Um, and this was really because you know my my I didn't really have such a strong interest in playing music at six years old. But my my mom thought it would be good for me, and uh, she. I wanted to play soccer. I was uh, I was interested in being a good soccer goalie, and my mom said, "Well, if you play piano, you know this will improve your hand-eye coordination." Anything to get so, you on, on the yeah, ivory. Yeah, so I said, yeah. "Okay, yeah." So, <laughs> so I, that's that's how I started originally, and then you know I started listening to more and more, and of course it became a, an independent passion. You know that I something that I was self-motivated to dive into continuously through through my childhood. After that. Well, at the Block Festival, we're going to have what's called the Learn Program, and you're going to be one of the 
uh, featured presenters. You're going to be talking about uh, how you, your travels and, and how you've come across all of these great instruments. A few of them are here. What is the advantage of having something like the block here in Logan, Utah and other towns to allow people like you that have been around the world and have, have delved in all of these magnificent art forms to be able to share with the people that attend the festival? Uh, anytime we are exposed to art, it can, it can touch our soul, you know, it can touch us somewhere inside. And so anything that brings art to the people, uh, I think is going to have a beneficial effect on, on individuals and then ultimately as a collective. I mean, the, the, you know, in this day and age, we are in a not a particularly artistic age. If you, Unfortunately, you, I have to you, agree with you. You yes. look at the architecture, modern architecture, compared to, say, Renaissance architecture or something. You can see, I mean, there's not nearly as much thought and intention in detail in, in nearly any modern building. You know, and it's, it's, there's something similar going on with other art forms as well. I mean, there are, there are always exceptions and there are always exceptional artists in any field. Um, but in general, this country, this culture, we, we could use more art. We could use more art in our daily lives and we could use more time to focus on art. We could use more artists. We could use more people who are passionate about art. And so, if we want art and we want artists, we need to support them. You know, we need to have opportunities for artists to present. And that's their what the block will do. This is what the block festival is. Fantastic. Right. Now, as you see, we've brought uh, two of your magnificent instruments, and you were warming up right before uh, we went to film, and we were enjoying it. All of us that are here. So, why don't you introduce uh, the instrument in the foreground first? Okay. Yes. This is a sitar. This is from India. Um, this is the legendary sitar, most people, you mentioned the Beatles, we probably all know from the song Norwegian Wood from that's the true. Beatles. Yep. That's true, which um, is, a, is, I mean, it's, it's a catchy tune, but it's, it's a very superficial display of the sitar's potential. Well, you're, you're just introducing it yeah, to, to, yeah. to uh, Western yeah. audiences. True, you know, and, um, but the, the sitar obviously has, a performance on the sitar can last several hours. You yep. know, without stopping. You know, they, it's it's uh, uh, the presentation of the music in India as individual songs. You know, radio length songs. This is practically non-existent oh, well, in, there, in, yes. in this in the world of Indian classical music, where where the presentation of a raga, which is a sort of a melodic form creating a mood, um, a presentation of a raga can start very very slowly and meditatively and. Uh, the tabla accompaniment, the, the drums, the pair of drums from North India, you know, might not even in, enter the performance until an hour into it, you know. And then, then it can become really exciting. And I, I hope to have a uh, tabla player with me at the, at the block festival. And that's this. one of the things, too, that they'll um, probably learn. It's like, hey, when you play these instruments, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a four-minute song. You know, repeat right. the chorus twice. No, and, no, no. And I could vouch for that, too. Uh, having heard you live, you could really you know, get into this for 30, 40 minutes at a time, and it's very enjoyable. So did you receive, did you get this one specifically from India? This one particular, in, and this specific sitar actually came to me, actually. Uh, How? Um, last year, there was a, a man contacted me, and he said, I have, I have a very uh, exquisite sitar that was made by the legendary maker Hiran Roy in the 50s. He said, and I, I bought it years ago and I put, I mean, he had it rebuilt. And he showed me links on, on, online to the luthier who, who actually had studied with Hiran Roy back in um, the 60s, lived, with, lived at this very address on here. And uh, so this, this man, he, he's a Westerner, he lives in New York. Um, and so he, he re fully restored this, and if you, you can you see it online on his on his website. He calls it's it. It's a magnificent he, he, instrument. Yeah. He actually he calls this the Stradivarius of sitars. I really, mean, this is a, it's a very exceptional sitar, and so um, it's elegant. It's it's a beautiful. The, everything on it looks magnificent. Now the one we have in the background is an oud, correct? That's correct. And where did you uh, get the oud, if you want to bring that up for all of us? To well, see? so I, I uh, first started playing the oud when I uh, 
you know, after I went to India the first time, I, I kind of caught the travel bug and... Uh, you went to Turkey? I, I, yeah, it was, it was within a couple of years I, I first hitchhiked across Europe to Turkey and spent six or seven months hitchhiking around in Turkey. And uh, I, I had, after I came home from India the first time, actually, um, I was back in Bellingham and I, and I saw a really incredible concert of Turkish classical music and I thought, okay, now I, I, I must... I must investigate, I must explore. So, so I went to, uh, I showed, I studied the language and so by the time I arrived in Istanbul I could get by without English and, um, and bought an oud and started hitchhiking around the country and finding musicians everywhere I went and learning here, learning there, learning. And then I just kind of started going deeper and deeper into the, the classical music, the, the Turkish, the Turkish art music, I mean the Ottoman era art music, um, which is very, very beautiful and very rich and complex uh, art form. Also. So before we get into the music, and, and everyone's going to love hearing you play, talk a little bit about the band that you play with, because there's a lot of in Eastern influence in the band. Yeah, so this, this band, Earthestra, we started off as a, as a trio um, with Ryan Conger, who Many people, I mean, he's a, he's a well-recognized musician in, in Utah. He's an organ Phenomenal player. Musician. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, you know, he plays, for instance, with uh, the legendary Joe McQueen, the 99-year-old saxophone player. Who they're still performing, you know, they still have performances every couple weeks. Um, he, you know, he plays with Talia Keys and, and many of these other notable musicians in, in um, Utah. But he and I have been friends going back to our teenage years. Um, and... It was th maybe three years ago he suggested. You know, actually, we, we taught together at a high school for some years as well. We co-taught some classes, and we, for whatever reason, we never really thought to get together and just play together until a couple years ago. I, would, I, had, I had, for a few years, had left, you know, it had been a few years since I had left the high school, and he, you know, he, he tossed the idea by me. He said, you know, I bet we could get Travis Taylor, who's an incredible drummer, a very versatile drummer. He's played many different styles. He said, let's, let's get together with Travis and let's, let's jam. Let's try to see what we can do of fusing east and, east and west. Like it's kind of a east meets jazz in a jam band kind of approach to music. And, and you know, it took, us, it took us a little while to find our groove, but then when, when we found our, we started finding our groove and finding our sound, we were like, oh wow, we really can, we can have a, a lot of fun and, and create something beautiful by fusing these, these art forms in a way that is hopefully respectful to, to both traditions. And, and so in this, in this group, you know, Ryan plays all the vintage keyboards, the Hammond organ and the, um, the Wurlitzers and the Rhodes and the Moogs and the, you know, the uh, analog synthesizers and stuff like this, all the, the classic vintage keyboards and and, um, and I, I play sitar, I play oud, I play guitar, I play some other instruments as well. Um, and, I've and, had the advantage of, of hearing it. It really is a magnificent mm. concert. I, I only got to hear you for an hour. I wish it was two or three. Mm. Hey, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean we're we're having a lot of fun, and now we've been we have since included another percussionist, Dan Fields, who who is another great percussionist who you know, you'd recognize from plays with you know half a dozen different bands around Utah. Um, so yeah, the, we're playing as a four piece now and we'll be playing, I guess, Saturday night at the Blockfest. And um, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it. We played a couple years ago at the Blockfest and it was a very short but very sweet set. We had a great time, felt very well received. Well, it's going to be one of the highlights of the festival. I will vouch for that personally. So enough talk for now. Uh, which instrument and what song are you going to play for us? I think I'm going to play something on the sitar. Fantastic. For now, and I think I'm going to play, I'm in the, I'm tuned to the raga Charu Keshi. Tell us a little about the song before going into it. The, the, this melody that I'm going to play is actually, there are, there, there are words set to it, which I, I'm not going to sing, I'm just going to do an instrumental. It's, it, so this melody is associated with um, somebody named Kabir. In, who's from Varanasi, Banaras, the, the city where I live in India, mm -hmm. and uh, he's, he was a medieval um, era. Kind of, you know, he was a poet. He came from a Muslim family, but he, at a young age, he took a, a Hindu spiritual teacher, and he his poetry is is sort of. Um, transcendental it, and it, it's equally irreverent to both the Islamic and Hindu orthodoxy and 
and in doing so, it, it, he, he sort of brings about some sort of union, just on going deeper in the, you know, beyond the surface of spirituality into the into the heart of spirituality, and and so he he's a he's quite a well beloved figure from Benares history. Benares again is the name of the city. And so this it, is a very historic song. Yeah, yeah, this melody, and so it was, it was taught to me by by my guru, Pandit Shivnath Mishra. Um, who, who is a very, you know, very well known. He's he's considered to be like the last living, pure Banaras Garana, which is sort of a tradition lineage. This Banaras Garana sitar, you know, he he's a very very pure musician, a very pure-hearted man, and uh, he he's like another father to me. And so he, this this is a melody. The raga itself is is has limited form and much scope for improvisation, right? So I'm, I'm going to play, we're only playing three, four minutes. I'm going to mostly, I'll do maybe a, a short improvised introduction, and then, then I, will, I will play this melody and ho hopefully uh, get this melody stuck in your ears. Well, I know it'll be stuck in my ears and hopefully it'll be stuck in everyone watching's ears. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Wade Evans.
Wade Evans can be seen at the Block Festival on September 28th and 29th in downtown Logan's Historic Theater District. To purchase a pass, see the full schedule of events, or to volunteer, please visit theblockfestival.org or find us on Facebook and Instagram. For The Block, I am Harry Keynes.